Hello everyone, welcome to the Sandpoint on Stream YouTube channel. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the PGCT 2021 question paper and our main focus will be to discuss the question from the Geotechnical Engineering. Now this particular subject holds a high weightage in various civil engineering exams like if you write SSC J paper or if you are writing PWD, KRIDL, KPTCL or even RWS exam. So everywhere you are going to find the question from this particular subject. And with respect to PGCT paper, if I talk, so previous year there were total 22 questions out of the 75 questions, in which there were 13 one mark question and 9 two mark question. And total weightage in terms of marks was 31 marks out of the 100 marks. Similarly, in other exams also, you can find the high weightage of the geotechnical engineering subject. Now in our institute, I basically deal with the subject. So with me, you can learn the basic concepts and how to tackle the problem if it is from geotechnical engineering. And this will help you if you are writing any exam with respect to civil engineering. So let's start our discussion. So the very first question which we are discussing over here is the negative skin friction on a pile and then we have been provided by four options. So we have to tell whether this negative fr skin friction, it acts in upward direction or downward direction and whether it increases or decreases the load carrying capacity of the pile. So let's understand the concept of skin friction first. Then we will talk about the negative skin friction. Now this concept has been discussed thoroughly and many times in the video lectures and in our classroom program. So here, let me draw a pile first. So suppose this is our pile, which is subjected to load capital Q. So this load is coming from the superstructure. We can also show here the ground level. Suppose somewhere here we have the ground level. Now to take care of this load, which is coming from the top, there are two things which are responsible. One is called as the end bearing. So for at the bottom, a reaction will be developed, which we generally call it as end bearing QEB. And the other thing which is going to resist the Q load that is called as the skin friction. And it is acting in the upward direction. So this is QSF skin friction or simply we can write it as QF. So now as soon as the load is coming, that load has to be taken care. So there are two things. One is the end bearing that is the reaction at the bottom and the skin friction which are going to take care. Now the skin friction is acting in upward direction because when this load Q is acting in downward direction, the movement of the pile or the settlement of the pile will be in downward direction due to which the friction will be developed in the opposite direction that is the upward direction. So this is the basic concept of the working of the pile or the load bearing action of the pile. Now coming to the concept of negative skin friction. So for that here we have another diagram. So second diagram which you can see here. Here if our pile is inserted in case of a soft soil. So here you can see soft soil has been provided in the top layer while stiff soil is provided at the bottom. If I talk about the previous case, in previous case, the soil which was there, that was a stiff soil. It can be clay. So it was stiff soil. But now I am discussing the case of soft soil. So now again Q load has been applied. It has to be taken care by skin friction and it has to be taken by the end bearing. So at bottom we can see end bearing action is there. And skin friction is also there in the bottom layer where stiff soil is there. So skin friction is acting in upward direction, but where the soft soil is present there, the things are a bit different. So in case of soft soil, what is happening when the load is coming from the top, my soft soil, it will get settled. That means the movement of the soft soil will be in downward direction. The soft soil will be moving in downward direction due to which this soft soil will be experiencing a friction and that friction will be in upward direction. So the friction on soft soil is in upward direction. 
and the soft soil is in contact with the pile so if i shade this portion the upper portion of the pile this is in contact with the soft soil so the pile will be experiencing so now my pile will be experiencing the friction in the opposite direction because it is in contact with the soil so on soil the friction is acting upward so on pile the friction will be acting in downward direction and this downward friction is nothing it is called as negative skin friction so here clearly you can see the arrow marks which are in downward direction so skin friction or negative skin friction it acts in downward direction as it is stated in option c it acts in downward direction now coming to the second part whether it increases the load carrying capacity or it decreases the load carrying capacity so now let's discuss about it so for the first case first case means this pile first pile if i have to write the mathematical expression it will be written as the total load carrying capacity of the pile will be equal to end bearing plus skin friction the total load which this pile can take is the end bearing component and the skin friction component similarly if i write the mathematical expression for my second pile so here in this case this total load carrying capacity will be end bearing action because here at the bottom again we are experiencing a reaction along with that there is skin friction at the bottom of the pile where stiff soil is present so in this region skin friction is acting in upward direction but in the topmost portion where soft soil is there negative skin friction is there which is in downward direction so we have to write here negative sign and then i can write it as qnf nf means negative skin friction earlier we were writing sf this was sf skin friction now i am writing qnf which is negative skin friction now if i compare these two equations so on comparison we can see that here these two terms are getting added qeb and qsf while in the second expression we are adding these two terms but we are also subtracting something that means the overall value of q in my second case will be less in comparison to the first case so on comparing the first equation and the second equation we can clearly state that the load carrying capacity of the pile in the case of negative skin friction that decreases so the correct answer is option c now coming to the next problem in which it has been asked what will be the pressure exerted on the wall if the retaining wall is moving away from the backfill now this concept it has also been dealt in our video lectures where we have understood the terms like active earth pressure passive earth pressure and pressure at rest same concept i am going to discuss over here so let's draw the retaining wall first so suppose this is our retaining wall the purpose of the retaining wall is to support or restrain the movement of the soil which it is holding so suppose this is our soil which is called as backfill this is called as backfill now here there are three possibilities either this retaining wall it can move away from the backfill or it can move towards the backfill or it can remain at its own location so let me discuss each of the case one by one so first case is when the retaining wall is moving away from the soil or the backfill so this is moving away second possibility is when it is moving towards so the movement of the retaining wall is towards the backfill and third condition is when it is remaining at its original state that is the condition of rest so when the wall is moving away we call the pressure that will be exerted as the active earth pressure active earth pressure second possibility is when it is moving towards the backfill that is the second case so here it is moving towards the backfill so here it will be called as passive earth pressure and third is the condition of rest that is it is not moving at all it is at its original state so that time it is called as lateral earth pressure or earth pressure at rest condition so if we go by the option in question it has been asked the retaining wall is moving away from the backfill so for this case our answer will be active earth pressure now let's move to our next problem 
now the third problem that we have here is that if we do the compaction using the vibratory roller then this vibratory roller will be best suited for which type of soil so we have learned this that there are various methods of compaction depending on the type of the soil so which roller or which type of roller will be used for which type of soil that we need to remember now this is very common type of question it can also be asked under the highway engineering there also we do the compaction for the construction of the roads so here the correct answer for this particular problem is the well graded dry sand so sands are basically being compacted using the vibratory roller at the same time let's learn for different types of soil what are the various compaction methods so answer option b will be the correct answer for this particular problem so for sands we use the vibratory rollers suppose it has been asked for clay which type of compaction method we need to adopt so for clays we go for the sheaf foot rollers for silts we go with the pneumatic pad rollers and smooth wheel rollers are used in the case of the crushed rocks or the gravels so generally these four are normally asked in the exam so you need to take a note of this apart from that we have frog hammer a rammer or tempers also so these are basically used in the confined areas where the main type of rollers cannot work so there we use these kind of small hammers or rammers like if we have to work behind the retaining wall or if we have to work in some kind of trench we have to do the compaction of the trench so there we can take the help of the frog hammer or the rammer or tempers next problem is what will be the factor of safety if our retaining wall it is about to fail due to the overturning in case of a cohesive backfill so there are various factor of safety which we need to remember depending on the type of failure and the type of soil so here the name of the failure is given as the failure is happening due to overturning and the soil that is present as cohesive soil cohesive means clay soil which shows the property of cohesion so here we need to remember the factor of safety so here a table has been considered based on which we can answer this problem so here if the failure is happening due to sliding irrespective of the soil the factor of safety this is the minimum value we have to consider it to be 1.5 if the failure is happening due to overturning which is the case given to us so due to overturning in problem it has been asked so we need to check which type of backfill it is whether it is granular granular can be sandy or gravel or it is cohesive cohesive means clay soil so based on that we need to pick the value so for granular it is 1.5 for cohesive it is so in our problem it is cohesive so correct answer will be minimum factor of safety should be taken as or considered as 2 if the bearing capacity failure is experienced if the retaining wall is failing due to the bearing capacity means the bearing capacity of the soil is less and the failure is happening then the values will be 2 and 3 for the case of granular and cohesive backfill respectively so remember this table so based on that we can answer these kind of question so in some other exam you can expect that instead of overturning they may give you the bearing capacity failure or the sliding failure so based on that we can answer such questions now coming to the last problem which i am discussing although there are many more questions to be discussed so we'll be discussing them in the coming lectures so in this particular question they are asking us that what is the ratio of shear stress to normal effective stress so first of all we need to see what has been asked in the problem and then we can proceed further so they basically they are asking the ratio of that means the shear stress denoted as tau divided by effective stress and this is normal effective stress so i am writing it as sigma n and for effective we generally consider a bar over sigma so this ratio we need to calculate so for this we'll be using the concept of mohr coulomb theory so mohr coulomb theory gives us a equation that tau is equal to normal stress tan phi dash plus c dash so this phi dash is called as 
effective friction angle c dash is called as the cohesion or effective cohesion so here in problem it is already given that that friction angle or effective friction angle so phi dash value is 38 degree and this is a cohesionless soil cohesionless soil means the value of c dash will be zero so from this equation i can say that my tau is equal to sigma n tan phi dash further we can write tau upon sigma n is equal to tan phi dash and phi dash value is 38 so tan 38 degree we can substitute here the value so from here on calculating the tan 38 comes out to be 0.781 so the correct answer is option a for this problem so we have discussed five numericals which have been asked from geotech in this lecture all were very fundamental questions these are common questions which we solve in our video lectures also so same questions we can expect in this year pgct also or if you are writing any other exam also and in every question we have seen there are certain equations fundamental equations or fundamental concepts which we need to stick to and based on that even if the question is modified then also we can answer them so in this video we will keep it till here only the remaining questions one mark question as well as two mark question of geotech will be discussing in our coming up parts so that's all in this video if you have any queries with respect to any problems you can always contact us and the description for the courses from where you can learn the entire subject that has been mentioned in the description so please check the description see the courses see the various topics which have been mentioned in the courses because the course has been designed based on the requirement of the exam so whatever is needed for the preparation sandpoint is offering that adequately so keep learning and stay tuned with sandpoint you can subscribe the channel to get the updates thank you